materials engineering here at Monash is a very comprehensive department. We aim to be at the cutting edge of research and also teaching. And the department is made up of materials engineers, materials scientists, even chemists and physicists. So we all are working on the materials of tomorrow. The Department of Materials Engineering at Monash University is unique for many reasons. We're one of the oldest consolidated materials departments, but we're unique on the basis of large investment in infrastructure and uh, the ability to perform cutting edge research across the board. Well, the facilities at Monash in general, but also in the Department of Materials Engineering are really world leading and second to none. The department here is a comprehensive department, so we cover the traditional areas such as metallurgy, ceramic engineering and polymer science and engineering. However, the last decade has seen us advance into areas such as functional materials, nanomaterials and biomaterials, with a particular emphasis on those modern areas in both research and teaching. My research lies at the interface between engineering and the neurosciences. Specifically, I'm trying to develop new biomaterials that can integrate into the brain and help repair the brain after traumatic brain injury or neurodegeneration. In our current research, we're trying to develop smarter biomaterials that can respond to a light stimulus. This will allow us to encapsulate or hide biomolecules or even stem cells within the brain and then release them at certain time points along the regenerative cycle. And this can really improve the regenerative outcome of the patient. So we like to develop smart biomaterials that not only will help repair the brain but also can be applied to uh, repair of the damaged heart or even cartilage tissue. So this is now using light activated stimuli to release biomolecules that will help repair the, the, the damaged organ. And we hope to translate our technology of stem cells and biomaterials into the clinic to really improve the, uh, the therapeutic outcome of, of the patient. I'm working in a cross area of soft materials and another structured carbon, particularly graphene. What we do, you know, we use chemically modified graphene as a molecular building block to make a new generation of functional soft materials that are electrically conductive. Graphene-based soft materials are a very new research area. In the past years, we have been doing a lot of fundamental research to understand you know, the supermolecular interactions between graphene sheets, between graphene and other functional molecules and other particles. Based on these understandings, we have been looking for new ways to engineer the architecture of graphene-based bulk assemblies, hoping we can achieve some new applications that we cannot get from traditional soft materials. Because our graphene-based soft materials have a unique combination, we believe their large-scale adoption by the market is highly possible in the next 10 to 20 years particularly in the areas related to water purification, energy storage, as well as health care. So all our initial results look very exciting to us. So the main area of research which I focus on is that of organic semiconductors. Um, they are a class of carbon-based molecules and polymers which can behave in a similar fashion to inorganic semiconductors such as silicon. So, we're interested in using them in light emitting diodes, in transistors, and also in solar cells. So, for example, for the case of light emitting diodes, organic light emitting diodes are already being used in smartphones and tablets. One of the key goals we are aiming at is to see solar cells made from solution processed low cost materials developed into a commercial technology which we can then see deployed on a much wider scale than we currently see photovoltaic technology. So in the renewable energy group in the department, which constitutes not only myself, but the research groups of Professor Udo Bach and Professor Yibing Cheng, we're working on taking our solar cells, which we can make in the lab, which are about this size, which are great for um, establishing their efficiency and, and performance, and then realizing them on a much larger scale using industrially re relevant printing techniques uh, such that we can take this technology one step closer to something which you're likely to be able to put on your roof. One thing we know is that materials hold the key to our future in terms of quality of life and in terms of manufacturing, in terms of lightweight emission control 
and so forth. So some of the grand challenges in engineering at the moment are all materials based. So we certainly know that the future is bright for materials. Every day holds new excitement and new challenges.